Hi there, it's two o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Molly Day and I'm here on staff with NSBA. Um, and we're gonna spend some great time with uh, our good friends over at Sister and one of our partner companies. Um, they've been at the forefront of translation technology since its inception, uh, since its inception in 1968. For today's webinar, how to thrive globally. Um, this is the second part of our two part series with Cistern and, and they're gonna help you leverage the global community to grow your business and, and how to thrive and grow in that community. Um, we're gonna be discussing thriving on a global stage, uh, using strategies for leveraging opportunities abroad, uh, how to increase exposure and boost your profits, which is really um, uh, why we're all here. Um, leading the, the discussion, we will have Keith Jameson and Ken Behan from Cistern. <coughs> Keith is the director of cloud sales, where he's focused on creating a growth strategy for the online sales channel of Cistern Translate Pro, the company's cloud-based translation solution. He holds an MBA degree with a focus in marketing from La Sierra University in Riverside, California, and a BA in psychology from California State University. Ken is the VP of sales and marketing, where he leads Cistern's American sales teams to help companies grow profitably whilst overcoming the language barrier of global commerce. He's a proud Irishman, Irishman, fourth generation Dubliner and passionate about the mighty Leeds United. And as I said, I'm Molly Day here at NSBA. Uh, we are a staunch nonpartisan organization fighting for your small business within Washington, DC. Uh, we will be using our Q&A panel. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A platform. That'll help us best prioritize whatever questions come in. Um, if you have any issues or, or problems along the way, feel free to shoot me an email at mday at NSBA. And with that, uh, I think we're gonna turn it over to you, Ken. Thanks very much, uh, Molly. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm very passionate about the mighty Leeds United. And those of you who know anything about soccer in the, the, uh, the Premier League in, in England, uh, they were hammered 7-0 by Man City yesterday. So if you see it's still uh, tear stains just around here, you know that was from three hours of, of, of uh, crying last night. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to start off today with was um, just to look back. Uh, we did uh, conduct some polls, which um, those of you who were on the, the, the previous um, uh, webinar would uh, it did contribute to and what we wanted to do was just to uh, I'll just share my screen now was just to go back over those um, and we will be asking uh, more questions today but uh, I always think it's very interesting when you start looking at this information and um, you know because as a, a small business owner it's in some ways we're you know we, we tend to be isolated in that we do have a, a small community um you know of friends and family and other business acquaintances but rarely do we get an opportunity uh, you know to have a larger uh, crowd give their view on particular points so the first po um poll that was asked was do you currently have a plan uh, to begin exporting and interestingly enough um we saw that uh, quite a, a large number from, uh, especially from other webinars we've done, um, that 38% of people are already exporting, which is uh, great to see, but that still uh, leaves uh, quite a significant chunk of others. And um, as, as you can see here on the screen, 31%, uh, were, it's not currently on their agenda. And 8% uh, were looking at um, doing it within the next year. And great to see so many in, in a planning phase, because as we spoke of in the first um, webinar, the planning phase uh, of going global is, is probably one of the more important phases in that, you know, really understanding what market you're going to go after and why uh, is, is, is very much important. And we'll, I'll touch on that a little later on. Uh, the second question we asked was pretty simple, you know, have you encountered language? Uh, and not surprisingly, uh, as, a, as a business barrier, so not surprisingly, 67% or two thirds of people said yes. And um, typically, uh, again, as we spoke of in the first uh, webinar, um, you know, the first time you have a problem with language is when that email comes in, in and nobody in the office understands it. And what what do we now do, you know, and and you know, typically people go out to some of the free uh, online translation uh, services and go, oh, okay, somebody wants to buy something from us, somebody wants to sue us or whatever it happens to be. And then it all kicks off from there. But typically this is what we would see that uh, mo most um, or two thirds of companies typically see a, um, a, a encounter a challenge uh, at some stage and especially 
uh, over the last, uh, you know, with the pandemic over the last couple of years, it's become more evident that that people are buying online and as a result are, you know, buying from, you know, you, you can literally buy anything uh, from anywhere. Uh, so from that perspective, it's not unusual to see uh, this number and I expect it to grow o- over the, the coming years. And the final question we asked uh, in the first webinar was, are you familiar with how language technology can support your export efforts? And again, uh, a low number, 7% uh, said, yes, uh, you use technology today. Uh, And again, this is kind of typical. It's strange. Uh, A a lot of people uh, don't actually, as I say, encounter language as as a challenge until you know it it literally hits you in the face and um so part of what we we wanted to do in the first webinar and today is to kind of give you a a sense of where technology plays a role and uh, not only as um, a sales tool but also as a productivity tool but again more about that uh, a little later so uh, we do as i say have um, some other polls today so i'll hand it back to you molly to go through the first poll Okay, it should be popping up now. Everybody should see the question on your screen. So we'll give everybody a few minutes to get that to get that logged. Are you getting responses, Molly? I am. I'm getting responses. Okay. It's starting to slow down. So okay. let's say another five seconds, and then I'll close it and show the results. I didn't see the question. I don't know if that's because I'm presenter view. Hmm. Could be. You're, you should be able to see it. But I think mm-hmm. the most important thing is the participants are. So let's. Um, I'll go ahead and close that polling, and we'll take a look at the awesome. results. <laughs> Okay, so it's um, most most people on the line are less than the five thousand dollar level. So I'll go ahead and close that, um, and I think we're going to turn it over to you, Keith. Absolutely, thank you, Molly. I'm going to attempt to share my screen. See if this works. And. Can you guys see my notes or just the slide? Yep, we can see the slide. Looks great. Awesome. Hey guys, uh, once again, my name is Keith. I, uh, they let me oversee the Sistran Translate Pro, which is our SaaS-based cloud product for uh, Sistran Software, which is a market leader in machine translation technology. Uh, if you'll recall from the first part of this webinar series, I cut out three different times so if uh, I decide to go off camera, it's because I want to save on bandwidth. I'm also uh, battling a pretty gnarly chest cold. So uh, if I go into a coughing fit, uh, I might go on mute for a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, it seems to only happen when uh, I start laughing. So for that reason, I have only plugged in really bad jokes for this presentation. Mm-hmm. So to start off, um, notice that I've renamed the webinar and it's how to fish in foreign markets. Uh, And that's because that's exactly what we're gonna teach you how to do today. Um, If you wanna feed a man for a day, you give him an international customer. If you wanna teach him to eat, I don't know how the joke goes, but hey, Ken, do you know the easiest way to catch a fish? Um, (laughs) It's to have someone throw it to you. (laughs) Or in this analogy, you wanna see what fish are swimming up to your boat. And the reason is you can look at your website analytics to see if you already have international customers coming to your website to view your product, even if it's only in English. And it's important to know that because you want to speak the language of your customer. Once you understand your customer's language preference, you're going to want to speak to them in their native tongue. And the reason is, if you recall from uh, webinar one, 72% of people are going to spend most or all of their time on websites in their own language. Um, 
Secondly, 56% of consumers said that their ability to Keith, if you've gone offline, hopefully not offline. I'm not too sure what happened there. You know, perhaps I'll wait for Keith to um, hop back on the line. Uh, Ken, do you want to? Oh, there's Keith. He's back. There's back. That's one. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting good at knowing when. That's good. <laughs> Keep your camera off, Keith. It may, it may, it should help with the bandwidth. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm having a good hair day, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try this again. Uh, so we lost you at 72% of, of people uh, shop on the uh, website. Awesome. Can you see the slide or the notes? I have a slide, yeah. Cool. Um, secondly, 56% of consumers said that the ability to obtain information in their own language is more important than the price. So if the first stage is looking at your website to see who's already looking, the second step is gonna to be to actually go talk to them. Those people are called early adopters. Uh, Ken, do you know the best way to communicate with a fish? Again, I'm gonna to have to say no. I know very little <laughs> about fish being a vegetarian. <laughs> uh, you drop it a line. So you wanna to talk to these early adopters on the marketing adoption curve, it goes early adopters, early majority, late majority and then laggards. Early adopters are an indication that there's a flood coming. You wanna reach out to these early adopters, you wanna to talk to them and you wanna interview them so that you can better understand your product. And once you do, you can use that information to better position your product or service in the marketplace. Now, you wouldn't use a hamburger to catch a fish, would you? The answer is yes, you would if that's what they're biting. Once you understand the needs of your customers, you can modify your product positioning and you can attract more customers from that market. And how do you do this exactly? Well, you, the short answer is testing. You catch a fish online by using clickbait. That's the last of my jokes, guys. Uh, you do this by, you wanna run low cost Google ads in different markets. Um, if you're a, a product manufacturer, note that eBay has 25 different intersects. I'm not gonna read them to you. They're on the screen. They're in alphabetical order. And then you wanna do some A-B testing. My marketing department is gonna love me for telling you that. Test the success of different languages. Test the success of different campaigns. Use more content, less content, more images, bullet points. Figure out what's gonna work for you. Lastly, you wanna approach new markets with curiosity and see what you find out. Um, once you invest in specific demographics, understand that you can actually advertise in multiple locales with a single translation. For example, if you want uh, an eBay ad in German, understand that you could uh, place that in Germany, Switzerland, or Austria. If you wanna have a French ad en Francais, you can advertise in France, Belgium, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Canada, and even several countries in Africa. Once you make contact across language barriers, here's a couple tips for maintaining sales outreach across these multiple markets. Firstly, you're gonna to wanna, to, excuse me for one second. Sorry, my dog's being a menace. I'm sure you've already read these bullet points. Tag your CRM language preferences. That way when you do outreach with specific customers, you already know how they prefer to be spoken to. Remember, localization is not a one-off task. You don't just send a flyer and, and wait for results. Sometimes you need to employ a nurture campaign. And this can be a multi-touch campaign with uh, multiple emails, ads, um, you name it. And if you are going to templatize your sales outreach and you're going to employ machine translation technology uh, like Sistran, the best, 
Some tips are simplify the formatting. Not all languages uh, enjoy letters the same. Uh, some, some languages really like letters. I know Spanish can have words up to 15% longer than their English counterpart. So you're gonna benefit from simplifying your formatting. You're gonna benefit from leaving some white space to accommodate the, the word length. And if you choose a basic Unicode font, uh, you're gonna be better off. Finally, minimize the font size and it's gonna also help out. Now that your sales outreach is successful and you're speaking the language of your customer, um, we need to talk payment. Different markets use different methods to transfer funds. You're going to want to educate yourself on the preferred payment method for each market. Uh, I know eBay is uh, PayPal heavy. Uh, I believe Facebook Marketplace um, lets people do it off to the side. So it could really be the customer's preference, whether that's PayPal, Zelle, um, or credit card. Um, note that just localizing the currency is not always the best strategy. I know this morning the Canadian dollar opened at 129 to each US dollar. Uh, that means if you want to have a, a pretty price like 999, you're going to have to price it on our side at 774. So just keep up on the, the conversion values. Note that sometimes peeking over the fence at your competitor pricing is the best way to go. Uh, we, you've been spying on competition since the beginning of business. Uh, nothing should change now. It's okay to see what pricing strategies your competitors are employing so that you can follow suit. And understand that you're probably not gonna get it right on the first try. Completely normal. Adjusting and adopting um, is, is part of the game. So now that you're accepting payment, understand that phishing is a unal, is a single direction transaction but customer support is, is bi-directional. You need to have a way for customers to get in touch with you when they have something to say to you. Recall 72% of consumers will buy your product or service if you provide support in their preferred language. That being said, uh, if, if you surf the internet right now, you'll note that chat support is the number one preferred channel and business world predicts that 85% of all customer interactions are gonna be automated by the end of the year, which is actually great news because you can automate your chatbot into up to 50 languages if you have the right machine translation software <coughs> like Sistrin. Note also providing great support is the best way to get word of mouth recommendations and grow your business. Now, imagine the impact of attracting customers to your website you then give them the ability to read your content in their native language. And then you provide an automated chat bot to guide them in their preferred language through your website content. It's not only possible, it's, it's kind of the way of the future and you're not gonna be able to avoid it. Uh, quick story, we had a, general, a customer named Kurt over at WinWorks and uh, he wanted a website, his website, to be translated in Spanish and French to accommodate his Latin American customers and Canadian customers. Uh, he asked us to do that and then he went on vacation to Wisconsin, which is highly recommended. While he was picking apples uh, up in his Wisconsin apple farm, we were working on his website. He came back on Monday and his entire website was transformed. So it's not difficult to employ these tools. In fact, Kurt returned up to his office on Monday, kicked his feet up on his desk, and he got back to work because his business is his business and translating is Sistrans business. The best part, all of it was paid for by the state. And to help share some funding options so that you too can return to your office and have it paid for by government grants and other funding opportunities. Let me hand it back over to Ken. Thanks, Heath. Actually, just before that, maybe Molly, can we do the second poll at this stage? Absolutely, let me get it launched.
OK, it should be in front of everybody now, so go ahead and vote and we'll close it up in about 30 seconds. All right, about five seconds left and then we'll close it. Okay, and let me share those results with everybody. Very interesting, yeah. And uh, as we discussed the last day, um, you know, one of the bigger challenges when uh, considering uh, exporting is the, the regulations, you know, what is the tax system there? all kinds of things. So regulation tends to be uh, number one. Um, so continue on. Um, Keith, can you bring up the, the slides again? It'd be great. And uh, just before I talk about funding, um, what I do want to talk about is um, funding itself is, is just one part of, of the jigsaw. Um, and it, it also plays into the whole area of uh, strategy that you're deploying as well. Uh, Keith mentioned uh, Windworks a little earlier and their strategy really was a, a test and see strategy. So let's make our website available and see who comes uh, to keep the analogies going fishing. And um, I believe in subsequent uh, conversations, they're beginning to see um, quite a, a reaction. So they're looking at how do they further use uh, the tools. Um, and having a strategy, whether it's, you know, we're going to do testing, A-B testing, whether it's going to be, uh, we're, we're going to go full uh, uh, long into a particular market in whether it's South America, Europe, whatever it happens to be, is important. But it's also guided by the type of product uh, that you sell. Uh, so for a highly technical uh, product, the challenge is going to be slightly different uh, to, you know, if it's, if it's a simple, um, you know, fluffy toy that uh, anyone can buy um, in, in a B2C, uh, from a B2C perspective. Um, also worth noting is the, the sales process that you, you deploy yourself as well. Um, again, tends to, to focus on the, uh, the, the type of product you have, but um, from our perspective, um, there, there's quite a bit of communication involved uh, when you're when somebody's buying a a, a language tool uh, from ourselves, uh, whereas uh, other or, or it could be a you know a sophisticated pump as in Eddie Pump, who had to translate many many different um, pieces of content to support their their um, th when when they went into the the, the Mexican market and, and uh, were very successful in there using our product. And typically then it all boils down to the bundle that you, you, you can um, look at. And when we talk about funding, we're, we're actually talking about the productivity tool element of this. Uh, when you're creating the strategy, part of, you know, the productivity tool itself is going to be, you know, a budget of between three and a half and five thousand dollars a year. Uh, but having the right, uh, you know, the, somebody on, on staff that can speak that language or locally uh, employed, um, you know, a much bigger um, expense involved. Uh, there may also be review of certain content. You know, you certainly don't want to be translating a legal document and signing it. You, you'll want it, uh, the translation to be um, edited by somebody who, um, you know, understands the, from a legal perspective what it is. But in general, there, there is uh, great funding available um, from an export perspective, uh, specifically around uh, technology, but in many, many areas, um, one particular or two of them, one of them is the California export. If you're in uh, California, another really good one is uh, getting to global.org uh, who uh, covered the, the um, all, all the U S and um Typically, what what uh, is available is a at, at the smaller level is a, a sort of a technology grant for around five thousand uh, dollars, which allows you to purchase technology and and relevant services um, around that. And I, just quickly to run through the steps, so you 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 do the apply, you get notified, and then you have to prove that you um, use the the technology. So you, you submit the invoice, and uh, they check that you know, 
if you if you said you were doing a website, uh, you, the website is is uh, visible. And in fact, uh, it, it tends to be the easiest one to get um, to get past as it's something they can just check online. Yeah, it, it's it's working. But um, as I say, the the, um, the the there are two, one for California and the other is uh, for uh, uh, go. I've actually lost the slides again there. Keith, if you could put them back up. Or maybe, actually, maybe, do you know what? I want to point out how quickly I'm able to reload my computer. Yeah, I, I can, I'll, yeah. Oh, you got it up. Good. Applause, it's fine. I'm just yeah. saying, I'm killing it. <laughs> um, so, uh, there, as I say, there is funding uh, available. Typically, it's to, to start with uh, technology and um to, to use that technology uh, to help you export. So ultimately, uh, the, the translation tool that, that Sistran provides is a productivity tool. And what does that mean? Well, it, it helps you to translate things um, far quicker uh, than you would if you had to do it through a manual process. And uh, on the next slide, um, we have some examples of, uh, of that. I'm not gonna go through all the examples uh, today, but uh, just picking on the one there, live chat and email response. So uh, this is a, a very typical one. Uh, and I recall a story that a, a guitar, a famous as they are now, they weren't famous when they started, guitar manufacturer who's a customer of ours. And uh, what they did was they, they uh, started um, getting forming partnerships across Europe and um, South America uh, as well, and then eventually into Asia. And um, what they did was they, those partners uh, were the the people who were selling it, but um, they were able to communicate using the tool in various, I think, ten different languages uh, and using live chat. So, for instance, the system works with uh, Teams. If any of you guys use Teams, it also works uh, with uh, Outlook. It works on uh, Word documents and uh, PowerPoints and several other things. Um, another example is uh, to the right there, customer support uh, L10N, which is an abbreviation for localization. And this is the process. Uh, and again, it's pointing to you know, uh, tech, how technical is, is your product, but typically, you know, the more technical, the product, the, the more manuals that you have to, that accompany it. So that, that's what we mean when we, we talk about customer support, it's the supporting documentation that you provide to the, the, um, to your customers. And in fact, uh, Sistran is involved in, uh, a competition here in, uh, run by the world trade center in San Diego called Metro connect. And uh, this year's winners were a company called Blue Network, um, Blue Sky Network, sorry. And what they do is they provide um, technology that allows you to um, uh, communicate and track f everything from fleets, uh, aircraft, all, all those kind of things. Now, obviously it's a, a very highly technical product, um, but what they found was uh, they chose two markets to export to uh, one being Canada, and um, you may know that the, the government in Canada is in Ottawa, so uh, there's a need to um, have everything in, available in French Canadian. And they also, um, because we're so close to the border, they chose Spanish uh, for uh, Spanish Mexican, and uh, they translated all their documents. They began communicating uh, with uh, partners, seeking, seeking out partners. And uh, generated um, revenue. I, I think of, I think it was three million dollars. The guy told me uh, in what's this eight nine months. Uh, so uh, you know the product itself is it's it's a big product. So it, you don't have to sell hundreds of units in their particular case to get to that number. But again, being able to get your um, your uh, manuals that are associated with your product available in the local language was one of the things they saw as a real benefit when they went looking for partners uh, locally to sell their, their product. And in fact, um, they had to as part of uh, the deal that they did with uh, the, uh, the Canadian government. It had to be in uh, French Canadian as well. Uh, another quick example is product training. And um, again, it, this, is, this is becoming more and more important uh, as we move towards video based, you know, typically training in the past was, you know, here's the manual, go learn it, or at best, you know, there, there's, you know, slide upon slide of 
questions and then that you get a, a test at the end of it. But today, majority of, of product training is, is video based. And uh, one of our customers, uh, again, very, very smart, just takes the SRT file, which is the um, effectively the, the, the file that uh, has all the words in it uh, that were said during the presentation, translates that and then puts it back in to uh, the video and allows them to, to provide captioning. Uh, now, again, it's they have t technical people who know how to do that. I, I'm not saying for one minute it's as simple as, you know, take something out and put it back in. There is a bit of complexity to it. But uh, if you have the internal know-how from an IT perspective, uh, it's pretty straightforward once uh, somebody is savvy in that uh, that area. And uh, the final one I'll, I'll uh, focus on here is the one beside here, marketing and social uh, media. And again, there's a um, uh, one of our customers uh, who, who are actually quite small. They're, they're in the B2C uh, marketplace. Uh, so everything they sell is they sell via their website. And um, I referred earlier to, uh, you know, how the pandemic has changed um, the way we buy things. And they were one of the beneficiaries of that. And um, what they found was that um, the, the, the CEO made a decision and he said, okay, let's make all our products available in uh, 10, I think it was 10 languages and uh, see do people buy it. Uh, support is done via chat. So if somebody wants, you know, how to this, that, and the other, and they're, they're selling, you know, what, what in, in relative terms are simple, you know, they're, they're uh, gifts items, you know, mugs and all these kind of different things. So the product itself is quite simple, but what they found was they increased sales uh, in the first year. So it's, they're into their second year now. I, um, I believe it was 38% uh, increase in sales. So a huge productivity gain, uh, sorry, a huge uh, revenue gain, should I say. Uh, and the productivity came about by simply being able to press, literally press a button and make their their website available in, um, in the 10 languages that they'd chosen. And also the ability to receive emails and to do chat uh, in the native language uh, from a support point of view. So um, lots of benefit, as I say, it's a productivity tool. Um, as an example, if you have a manual with 100 pages, it would take roughly about five minutes to translate uh, into one language. If you were to do that uh, manually, it would take a minimum of five days and probably closer uh, to two weeks. So huge productivity gains can be made. And talking about productivity gains, uh, Keith, I'm going to put you on the spot now. And what would happen if our colleague in Alexis in, um, in Paris wanted to do the same presentation to a French audience? Oh man, I've been dying to show you this. Can you see this screen? This I is can the behind indeed. the scenes. Okay, notice I did write down my dumb jokes. They, <laughs> uh, they were not memorized, although I could have. I just want to point that out. Notice that embedded within this PowerPoint application is the Sistran button. And right here, I can take my language pair. Look at all these profiles. You're not going to find this on Google. I like this one made by Ted. They trained uh, an engine using all of the Ted talks and they put tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sentences through the engine to have contextual accuracy. Oh, he was just at the, the pinnacle of his, uh, his speech there. I do apologize. Uh, uh, I think. Okay. Well, you guys met magic. So uh, you're going to think that I just pulled some sleight of hand. Trust <laughs> me. Oh, I was offline. This was translating seamlessly en français. This is the slideshow we just gave you with the notes so that Alexi can see not only the slides to present to customers, but the speaking points and even some really great jokes that he can include in his presentation. Very good. Very good. And beautiful. I'd probably drop the jokes. Weren't exactly great. I thought, I mean, I thought they landed. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. So just to summarize there, I, I know Keith, uh, unfortunately, uh, got, um, dropped off slightly there, but I, I think it took about 10 seconds overall. Keith, is that, would that be, Fairly accurate. 
the or... Latin based languages take less time than some of the more difficult ones. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Japanese, uh, I had to actually get up and go make a cup of coffee okay. before this was done. So uh, I think it was five minutes. Oh, but okay. I mean, when you consider the formatting and the time it takes to get the font size, the font type, um, it's that's nothing compared to a human translator with a mm -hmm. two to four day turnaround. This no, is uh, for Sergey in Russia. I just showed you a Satoshi slideshow in Japanese and uh, Josue is in Spanish. Uh, th this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw, and I hate to do this on the fly. Oops, oops, oops. Um, someone asked if it can be translated within an Excel spreadsheet. The answer is absolutely. And notice that Sistran has an add-in. There's actually an add-in for all of the Microsoft 365 suite. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook for email correspondence. Um, I hate to shamelessly plug the Sistran product and it's 325 unique models, but uh, it's, there's a reason we, we've been in the game for 53 years. Very good. Didn't seem very shameless to me. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, and, and again, if anybody wants any further information, please contact um, Keith uh, directly. So Molly, I think we have one more. I'd like to answer. I, I believe there was a few questions, uh, but uh, I believe we have one more poll um, to conduct. We do. Let me go ahead and launch that. Okay, everybody should see it now. And I, I do know there were a couple of Q&A comments that you couldn't access the polls. And depending upon what browser you're in, sometimes it, you can't access it if you don't download the app, which I do apologize for. I know that's kind of frustrating, but um, hang tight. And you know, the, the next one, if you're able to download the app and get to the webinar that way versus using the browser, then mm -hmm. you'll be able to participate in these polls as well. And what we'll also be doing, uh, Molly, is the of the, there's uh, six polls now. Uh, we'll be sharing them with everybody, but we'll also be giving you some commentary and insight in how um, best practices around some of the things that have been indicated as well. So that, that will also be available uh, over, over the next week or so, um, which hopefully will be a, a, a summary of, uh, of, of what you've seen. That's great. Um, I'm going to give it another five seconds and just to briefly build on what you were saying, Ken, is that um, I, I've also seen several questions about are we going to get the presentation and we are recording this. Um, we have to download and do a quick bit of editing uh, and, and we will share that uh, the recording as well as the slides with everybody. Um, like, like Ken said, within the next week or so we'll get out, get that out to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now and let's share those results so everybody can see. Oh, cool. Yeah. Europe, good place to go. Hopefully this COVID thing will be over soon and you can tour, you can go and have lovely Guinness in uh, in Dublin, and then head over to Paris Bias. for a beautiful meal and then go to Bias. London for the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any other, are there questions there, Molly, that um, that we could answer? I know, I think we're slightly over time, but I, I can certainly answer a couple if, if need be. We do have a couple. Let me... Um... So it says, which continents are easier to target? That's a great question. And um, usually what you'll find is that um, in America, uh, sorry, what I find, and it really depends where you are in America, but um, you know, the Canadian and South American markets are the closest markets. Um, and you more than likely have a, a better uh, chance of getting uh, native speakers, i.e. somebody who, who speaks Spanish. Uh, I know in Brazil they speak, uh, sorry, yeah, Brazil they speak Portuguese, but Portuguese. the majority of, of, the, um, of the countries in South America are Spanish. And in Canada, in Canada you have some French. So, uh, you know, getting the employees is, is important, but also, um, you know, there, there's a headache and, uh, in, in relation to Europe in that, you know, I'm, I'm here in San Diego, uh, it, even with the direct flight to London, it's it's a 14 hour flight. And there's a lot involved in that whole communication. You know, I was on a call this morning at 8 a.m. with somebody who was in Madrid and it was um, 5 p.m. there. And, uh, you know, so timing, time zones and so on and so forth had to be, be brought into consideration. Um, I do see two people have raised their hands, so um, I will call on you, and, and I think after those two questions, we'll probably try and 
close the webinar up. So the first, oh, well, one of those hands was just lowered. Um, I think this is one of our um, our uh, phone callers. So if you can uh, just state the question very briefly and we'll do our best to answer it. All right, can you hear us? I can't hear, hello? Mm -hmm. Yep, we can hear you. What's your oh. question? Oh, you hear me now? I'm sorry because I listened for my car because <laughs> uh, this is very, 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 very wonderful. Uh, I think so. This is the best idea. Make it a small business to translate it many language, especially me. I speak French and Creole. It's very, very, very good idea. I'm very interested at that. But what the best way for me get the machine, the translator, get my product sell overseas? What the best way? They say almost five thousand dollars. You got the product. Um. So it, it really it depends. It, it, I don't one hundred percent understand your question, but uh, I think what you're saying is, how can I best? Is it always going to cost me five thousand dollars? Is that your question, or yeah, okay. because that's one how much that one because because that's one very interested because yeah the is the best way because I really say that many time every time I enjoy I say the you got two tap the small business you got one small business you really got something they hand. You got one small business, you know, got nothing there. That's why I try. Yeah. Never so give it, up. One day, you, <laughs> I'll be there, help the small business like me, you know, got nothing there, bring something coming, get the business going. Yeah. Get the business going. May it's not easy. Every time I try, get. If I go get inside, it's not easy. I know Ken is my friend. <laughs> she do a very good job. You know what I'm saying? I'm almost there. I'm almost there. She's very good. It's very good talking show for me today. I understand a lot of stuff. I see a lot of opportunity. It's special for me. I go convention the uh, Toronto, Canada for the PVC furniture. I go convention Germany. Mm -hmm. For the PVC furniture, it's amazing. I make it PVC furniture. It's, it's an amazing thing because the people, I give you a sample. The people, hospital, okay, ki very sick, ki can't afford something cold. The PVC is not cold, you yeah. know, keep bacteria. It's, yeah. the, so I, it's the amazing I, design. I want to jump in and I, I do apologize. I, I, I hate to cut you off, but I know that we're getting toward the end of the seminar and um, the webinar. So I, I'd like to give Ken or Keith an opportunity to respond to that and then we'll move yeah. on and see if there are any other questions. Yeah, cool. So ultimately, um, you, you know, it when you it when you compare the any, any price, it's in relation to what value uh, or productivity you're going to get from that. Uh, so as the gentleman said, he went to a, a convention in, I think he said Germany and in, in, in Canada. And the reality of it is um, the product speaks so much better to the end user if they're seeing collateral. So you, whether it's brochures, whether it's manuals on how to use it, once it's in the native language. And that needs, that's what I was saying at the start, the strat, what is the strategy uh, going to be deployed? Uh, and, and the best place to start, to start, as Keith said earlier, is with a website. See, do people actually, you know, come fishing and start looking for your product and then move on from there, basically. Great. And I, I know we're bumping up against the time, but we have a couple of, of I think, really great questions. If, mm -hmm. if Ken and Keith, you have time to, to yeah. stay on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great. The first one is from Tier, and she asks, is it possible to transport services? I always consider transporting of an actual product. A translate or transport? Translate. Uh, transporting so she's asking can you can oh you is it yeah uh, yeah and, and again it's much more difficult um you know in a in a previous life i was a consultant and in fact that's how i ended up here in the us and um it, it's it's easy uh, when there isn't language involved um although some would say there's a huge difference between 
how Irish people understand what English is and American people understand what English is. But um, it can be more difficult um, because concepts change uh, between um, countries and it really depends on the service. If it's a business service, um, it, it can translate well. Uh, but there are international rules because, uh, you know, around things like accountancy practices. So, for instance, uh, we were doing a, uh, or we're, we finalized a very, very large deal recently and uh, ended up stalling over the fact that our um, our accounts weren't uh, what's called gap compliant, um, which is a U.S. term because our, our final accounts are assembled in, in France. So, you know, simple things like that can really cause uh, challenges. Uh, and when you're exporting a service, so to speak, it, it's got to be relevant on the ground to to that particular um, country that you're going to. And, and you may find whether it's legal or commercial, uh, very uh, different terms uh, being used. Great. Um, another question, <coughs> pardon me, um, is asking, will the Cistern Plus work within Microsoft Office? Yes, it will. Yeah. So it runs, works for Outlook. It works for uh, Word, Excel, um, and PowerPoint, PowerPoint uh, as, as demonstrated wonderfully by Keith earlier. Additionally, it integrates within Teams. So if you have internal collaboration or if you want to leverage Teams, uh, one of their applications to uh, as a chatbot, you can plug in seamlessly. Yeah, excellent. Pretty good tool. Great. Great. Um, the last question, and I'm, I'm hopefully I'm, I'm understanding this correctly. Um, I think they're asking for recommendations of customer support platforms that work best with export companies. Yeah, so there, there's a, a plethora of customer support platforms uh, available out there today. Um, and, you know, the, so it de really it depends on the size of company that you are. And that, that's probably what drives it. Uh, so there's uh, co companies like Live, uh, Live, uh, Live Person and talk desk, talk desk. Um, which are at the very high level. In fact, you, you can go right the way down to Teams. If you use Microsoft Teams, you can actually use that for customer support. And that can be, you know, to, for me, it's it's probably the, the, um, the most uh, inexpensive uh, way of doing it um, because it, it's built, it's already built in and, and um, it, it's got the functionality, the, the translation functionality uh, built into it. The other ones start off at, at you know, they're, they're, they're mainly geared towards enterprise. Somewhere in the middle are the likes of Zoho uh, and the Intercom uh, products, uh, which are kind of in the, in, in the mid tier. So it very much, um, as I say, depends on the size of company uh, that you are. And, um, you know, again, it goes back to strategy. What, what, how much are you going to invest uh, in the technology to support your customers? Great. Well, I, I think that's the end of our question. So I'd like to um, turn it uh, back to Keith and Ken. Do you have any final comments, final thoughts you'd like to share? Keith, you're the man. Yeah. Um, we, we've discussed the importance of growing our business through language translation. I would just uh, issue a caution. Uh, when you go out and select your, your translation uh, method, whether it's going to be a, a man or a machine, read the fine print. There's some providers out there where uh, if you put your data on the screen, it becomes theirs and they can sell it to third parties. They can use it to build their own uh, models better. Uh, Sistran has a very strict data privacy and security policy. And there's a reason we've been doing it for 53 years. Great. Well, uh, you know, Keith and Ken, I want to thank you so much. I think it's been a really great conversation. You've answered some great questions and it's, it, you know, clearly a great tool that you guys have. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I want to thank everybody who joined us on the call today. Um, thanks for, uh, you know, always being patient. I know that sometimes uh, technology is great when it works until it doesn't. Um, so we appreciate your patience with that. Uh, we will be following up. Um, so look for that email from our, from the good folks over at Cistern about, um, you know, slides, recordings of this and, and other valuable resources that we talked about. So with that, um, thanks so much for joining us and have a great uh, holiday season, everyone. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.